Hello Milkweed Nation. In this video we're taking a look at some plants that were flowering in uh, at the end of spring on June 20th. These were in full bloom. Uh, this video right here is taken on uh, August 1st of 2023. Uh, but what happened in the meantime is these plants were heavily cut back and they were cut back on June 26th with a heavy prune and you can see where I'm pointing right here. I, I just did a real hack job on these plants. But what happened afterwards will amaze you. So if you do a prune at the uh, beginning of summer, you're gonna have some tall flowering plants. And the goal here is to regenerate growth. Take a look right there. It's regenerated new growth, new flowers, and it's absolutely stunning. So this was 37 days after I pruned it that I'm recording this video. And there it is again. We've got another stem. It's going uh, to beautiful flowers. And it's like a brand new milkweed in the middle of summer. So in August, you're getting these wonderful blooms, nectar source for pollinators. And it's like a brand new plant right there from the, the root rhizomes and side shoots on the stems. So there's a couple different dates you can do this. You can do your pruning at the uh, end of spring or beginning of summer. You can do it all the way up till midsummer um, through the month of July. I discourage you from doing it after July. Don't do it in August. It gets to be a little bit too late. $5.99, I used this machete from Harbor Freight. Just hacked it off right there and got all that new luscious growth. Now the idea here is that it's gonna be attractive to monarchs to lay eggs on tender shoots. And there's been a lot of uh, research that's been done, primarily with common milkweed and on the East Coast and Midwest. And they measured the number of monarchs and they increased the egg laying on these fresh shoots. Look how lush that is. However, in the West, we have a lot fewer monarchs so I wasn't able to do any measurements. I didn't see any additional eggs being laid on these. In just a minute, we'll take a look at a, a plant here. I didn't quite get the stem cut off on that one on the right. Obviously on this one, I cut it clear off and it's got that new growth coming up. Really nice, just amazing growth, just like it was springtime. Got some chew marks from the tetra tetratropes uh, beetles. Now this stem over here, I, I hit it, but I, you know, I didn't want to hit that water line and I didn't sever it entirely. And what happens is the vascular system was still connected. So you see, had there not been um, pruning, these plants would have already gone to seed and those seeds are almost ripe right now. Let's take a look at a plant that I did not cut back. It looks a lot like that stem we just saw. These roots are, uh, these stems are entirely intact. There was no pruning right here. And these leaves, they, they, look, they look older. These are more aged, weathered, and the seed pods are ripening naturally. They're gonna be ripe at the uh, very end of August, beginning of September. Now on the ones that I pruned back, not a guarantee of seeds on those. So you don't wanna prune back your entire crop, especially if you're trying to get a seed crop. Not recommended that you do all your plants. Also not recommended if you wanna get seeds. So these will be a good uh, plant for seeds. These are gonna naturally ripen. Thanks for stopping by and looking at these milkweed plants with me. If it's good for the butterflies, it's good for me. Thanks for growing milkweed plants.